Mrs. Stroder, it's good to see you. I have a few questions for you for doc before Dr. Stafford comes in, okay? Sure. All right. The behavioral health screening tool starts when the rooming staff enters the patient's chart and enters some vital signs, specifically when the heart rate is entered and the rooming staff closes the vital signs section. A BPA or best practice advisory will show up indicating that the patient has not had behavioral health screening done within the past year. The rooming staff clicks on the flow sheet. This brings the rooming staff person into a documentation flow sheet where they can begin to enter the behavioral health screening tool. The initial two questions for uh, PHQ2, so does the patient have um, over the past two weeks uh, lack of interest or pleasure in doing things? And are they feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? We'll automatically sum the two scores for a total PHQ2. Rooming staff will also ask about audit one or alcohol screening and whether the patient has misused any prescriptions. In most cases, approximately 80 to 85 percent of screen, screening cases will be negative. The rooming staff will finish at this point. If the PHQ2 score reaches a total of four or higher, the screening tool automatically opens up an additional set of questions for the entire PHQ9. The rooming staff would then come in complete these additional items and work their way through. And get a total PHQ score for PHQ-9. You'll also notice that with a PHQ-2 subtotal of four or higher, not only did it open the additional PHQ, but it also now opened the GAD-2 for anxiety screening. This is because of the high uh, co-prevalence um, of anxiety and depression. Again, the rooming staff will come in and answer the two questions for anxiety screening. If screening is negative, it stops at that point. Or if screening is positive with the initial two questions, it will now open up the additional questions for the entire GAD-7. Rooming staff can come in, complete this section, and there will be now a, a GAD-7 subtotal calculated by the system. In the event that the patient declines to complete this screening tool or at the discretion of the rooming staff, for instance, if the provider is behind schedule, they may elect to document that the patient either declined or that the provider at their discretion has decided not to complete the screening at that visit. Once these screening tools are completed, the rooming staff will close the workstation. The physician or other provider will come back into the room And now when they come into the patient's, uh, patient's note, there will be some additional BPAs or best practice advisories. There will be four that will show up. One for depression screening. It will include the PHQ-9 total if it's positive. It will also have some recommendations based upon specific intervals. In this particular case, the PHQ-9 total is indicating mild depression with a, an intervention, a brief intervention, and consideration for medication. Had the PHQ-9 score been higher, it would have made additional recommendations. Looking at the information that you uh, uh, provided from the screening that you completed with Nancy today, it looks mm -hmm. like there's some degree of stress and worry in your life, um, and that there's been some alcohol use. In this particular case, the patient did screen positive for depression, and the provider would like to go ahead and initiate some treatment. They can come into the order section, and they might want to do a referral to a behavioral health team, and they can order that.
it will also end up sending a message to the office staff to make sure that that referral gets done. They could additionally um, start prescribing some medication at this point. and send that in to the patient's pharmacy. Lastly, the provider is going to make a suggestion to this patient that they come back on a short interval for close follow-up in two weeks. They can send a message to the staff at the checkout desk. Please make sure that this patient has a scheduled appointment with our behavioral health provider before leaving the office today. That will make sure that, the, that that referral gets done and the patient has an actual uh, visit date scheduled. So I have this colleague in our practice, Dr. Kessler, who likes to work with folks who aren't getting quite the results they like to get. So he's an expert in how mood and things like alcohol and stress can affect a person's health and medical conditions. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering what you would think about having him come and sit down with us, talk with us briefly about how things are going and how your thoughts and behaviors might be affecting your health. What, what would you think about that? Well, if you think it's the best, it's the best choice to do, I do. I, to I, do, then yeah. we could do that. Okay. Well, I, I do. I think it would be good to get another point of view. Okay. If I know that this patient is going to be seeing uh, my colleague, Dr. Kessler, I can send Dr. Kessler, our behavioral health specialist, uh, a message, Roger, please help with additional diagnosis, cognitive behavioral therapy, Dr. Kessler will then get a copy of my notes today in his electronic in-basket as well.